It's Wednesday, March 23rd, and you're watching a Coffee Break afternoon news update on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski. We have the latest on a new Canaan story that we've been following. Police Chief Leon Kralikowski reports that a shooting fatality yesterday in town was a suicide, and that person has been identified as 41-year-old Heather Sturz of Briarwood, New York. Kralikowski said that on Tuesday, March 22nd, at about 1.30 in the afternoon, the department received a call that an individual later identified as Heather Sturz, age 41, was armed with a handgun and was threatening suicide. Sturtz was reported to be on the property of a private residence located at 721 North Wilton Road. Arriving officers located Sturtz and found that she had a single gunshot wound. She was treated at the scene but did not survive. Further investigation determined that this incident is a suicide. However, that finding is contingent on receiving a report from the Connecticut Chief Medical Examiner's Office. Reports from the scene earlier in the afternoon indicated that the shooting occurred in a residence at 647 North Wilton Road, which is part of an estate centered at 721 North Wilton Road, and according to land records, is owned by Michael Kramer. The property has an overall appraised value of over $14 million, according to records. There's a lot more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. And in other news today, an impromptu memorial has sprung up in Monroe on Garter Road in the days since 19-year-old Sarah Squinnabalt died in a one-vehicle crash last week, as dozens of friends have come to the site to pay their respects. On social media and in person, people have begun to wonder about the safety of the narrow dirt road strewn with loose gravel and with trees and a dirt embankment right at the edge of the road. One man who had traveled all the way from Colorado to pay his respects remarked that the road was barely wide enough for two cars to pass each other. Squinnabalt died last Tuesday when the 2004 GMC Envoy she was driving left the roadway and rolled over in the vicinity of 295 Garter Road at about 940 at night. She was ejected from the vehicle, according to police. Friends remembered her on social media as a beautiful and genuine person who was passionate about music and animals. In fact, Bridgeport-based nonprofit animal agency A Hand for a Paw posted on Facebook that the group had received numerous donations in Squinnaball's memory. Much more on that story at MonroeCourier.com. And according to the Ridgefield Press, a Ridgefield man was among the injured the morning of March 22nd when a terrorist bombing rocked an airport and subway in Brussels, Belgium. The man, an executive, was visiting Brussels on international business and suffered injuries that were non-life-threatening, according to a source. The man's identity is being withheld. The company he works for declined to comment on the incident, only to say they do not comment on individuals and all employees had been accounted for. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility responsibility for the Brussels attacks, and President Barack Obama pledged to do whatever is necessary to help Belgian authorities seek justice. And in Stratford, the uproar caused by the trapping and killing of beavers in Roosevelt Forest will prompt the forest commissioners to call for a ban on trapping. Forest Commission Chairman Bob David said Tuesday that the commission is expected to approve a resolution that would ban trapping of animals or birds in the forest or on any public park in town. The commission will vote on that measure at its meeting tonight at Town Hall. The resolution would also call for the creation of a nuisance wildlife subcommittee to create long-term wildlife management plan to preserve the forest for safe and enjoyable usage by all residents. David said Tuesday that he and town officials consulted with the Humane Society of the United States to develop a plan so beavers and humans can coexist. The ban comes after the Forest Commission voted recently to set traps to stop the beavers who had built a dam in Pumpkin Ground Brook. Town officials said the dam had created flooding concerns for residents living nearby. So far, two beavers have been caught and killed in the traps that were set, according to Public Safety Director Larry Ciccarelli. The remaining traps that are in place will be removed tonight. But that does it for your Coffee Break News Update. You can watch us live weekdays at 11 on HAN.network.